giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the show where the tea is sweeter and the bots are hotter than the Florida sun. It's the Sweet Tea Southeast Region Show. Now to introduce ourselves, my name is John. And I'm Brian. Starting this week, we're going to be giving you a deep dive into the inner workings of a team from the Southeast Region of the U.S. And tonight, we have a special guest with us from Team 179, Children of the Swamp. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dylan. I'm the lead mechanical and design mentor on the team. And yeah. All right. And uh, Dylan has brought us a special giveaway tonight. Um, why don't you show him a little bit about what you're going to be giving off tonight? Sure. We made a couple of these shirts for the Orlando Regional. They say poo poo garbage on the front. And they have all of our failed designs in the back, including one special, you know, but. That is what we're giving away today. <laughs> All righty then. Thank you. All right. So we'll later on in the show, at some point, we'll give out the keyword for that, and uh, we'll see who's the lucky winner of the Poo Poo Garbage T-shirt. <laughs> All right. So to get right into it, um, while we're uh, going through the dive tonight, if Twitch chat has any questions, please uh, send us your questions and we'll fit them in somewhere during the show. So to kick things right off, um, I want to get right into it. So I, one of the questions that I have, and I'm sure a lot of people do, is that when 179 analyze the aspects of the game and they've read all the rules and they fully understand them as well as how to score points and such, where does your team go next? How do you gather all the different robot concepts and design ideas that people have together and decide on what to do next and what to prototype? So generally we have a few essential rules that we have when we start off our season. So when we talk about what the game looks like, first of all, what the what does the floor look like? You know, is it flat? Can you get away with the smallest wheels as possible? Those are all really, really good questions. Um, in this game, unfortunately, you probably have to have about one inch of the ground clearance um, to get at least over the bumps that you see this year. Um, so that kind of drives the initial geometry of the robot itself. Um, so when we looked at this game originally, there's two things that pop out, at least to us as Team 179. Obviously, when we look at how to collect these balls, the easiest way is probably an over-the-bumper intake. Um, but unfortunately, when you're under defense, you need to be able to get all your shots off. And if these balls are kind of getting worse and worse, we kind of figured that up close and personal and in the way of defense is probably going to happen more times than not. So we need to make sure that we can get all five of those balls out of our robot as quickly as possible. So that drove the design of this year's robot. And thankfully, and with a lot of tuning and a lot of testing, um, we were able to get all of our balls off, all five of them, in about three quarters of a second, if not maybe slightly longer than that. Interesting. So how do you go from there? How do you go and do your prototyping, and how do your prototyping and design groups work together to start refining the concepts that you have into CAD? So... <clears throat> The, the prototyping phase is, you know, what can we get away with? You know, if we have to be able to strafe these balls into the middle of the robot, what are some designs? Obviously, in the past, there are previous designs, mechanic roller intakes, platypus tails. All of these designs are all out there and available to us. But those are the things that we need to test first. Um, is it possible to even shoot? five balls in three quarters of a second and keep the inertia. What does that take? Mass, you know, can you PID that fast enough? Can you even even consider that fast enough? Um, and 
you know, what are some other factors in your design? And as you could probably see, and a lot of what a lot of people were talking about on this robot is this this shooter actuates up and down, um, and there's a lot of questions about that. And um, the reasoning for that is, you know, when we're under defense. We saw in 2016 that there is a lot of what I call awnings. Um, those are the max height fold out style um, blockers that you'll see. And first of all, we needed to get the camera up high enough and the shooter up high enough to be able to avoid that. Um, so in the off season, we were looking at um, spline broach shafts and anything to kind of take out backlash and something that is long armed or long long actuation that would help with that so we knew that that was an option for us coming into this season of being able to actuate that shooter um, the way that we wanted to um, but when we start catting our robot we usually start out with a with a basic geometry drawing you know one 2d view in solidworks or inventor um, and we are just throwing out ideas as fast as possible and seeing if they're even physically possible. Um, you know, can you put your shooter max height and does the camera still avoid the other blocker even looking at the goal? Just trying to chop ideas as fast as possible. Um, and fortunately, is the robot that you see there is pretty much what we came up with geometrically on day one and a half to two. Oh, um, wow. So coming up with those decisions and just cutting those as fast as possible, and not everybody's like that. Um, being able to um, get rid of ideas and just come to a conclusion, because unfortunately for us and our machining capabilities, you know, when we come to a season, we have lots of kind of a lot of dead time, um, either by ordering parts or by waiting for water jet companies to come and deliver our parts to us or even getting welding done. Um, so pretty much in our build season, we have about a week where we don't pretty much touch anything. We're just waiting. Um, so getting that design fleshed out as fast as possible and then moving on from there is our basic strategy in a season. Interesting. So um, I got one question from Twitch chat already. Um, so how are the sub teams structured on 179? Um, like the meeting times and the collaboration and such, and what deadlines do 179 students and mentors make for each sub component of the robot? CAD needs to be done by at the latest week two. That's 100% needs to be 100 100% fleshed out. It usually gets done at about one and a half um, to get stuff ordered by late that week or middle of that week. Um, just because just waiting for all that stuff to come in and we can already start sending our stuff out to get water jet and then waiting for it to come back. That's our timeline. Um, our first robot is pretty much completed and built by by the end of week four uh, to be reasonable. That way we can start giving it to the programmers, let them flesh out any problems. And while the programmers are, are programming stuff, they're, they're gonna come up to some sort of problem of this thing isn't possible to, to be able to hold that position as well. So that's what the mechanical team Slack needs to build up. And that way they still have a robot to, to program in that timeline. So they have about two weeks to, to program. And obviously we want to give our drivers the most time um, as possible to, to just train and, and, and get, get good. <laughs> so a so, uh, quick question that I have. Um, so obviously the team is large enough that we're able to go through into sub teams. How many students are you able to put into your CAD design sub team? We really don't limit ourselves to who's on what team, and that's kind of the glory of what the the nicety of what we have. We don't necessarily have a big, big team um, consistently, and probably a lot of our best students are in the somewhere around the 30, 30 team members. We have about 40 there, um, but in that timeline, we can, you know, in that first week, we are constantly streaming our our progress. So if we, we are looking at a couple streaming softwares to, to hopefully get that done. Um, sometimes we use Discord if it's a small amount of students or we'll use GoToMeeting or something where we can show what we're doing to the students and if they have any input or want to cat any specific part as we're going and ask questions, we can ask, we can answer any of those questions that they have and s explain our reasoning behind what we're doing and strategy. Um, 
we are not necessarily connected to a school per se. Um, so we really only meet about, I'd say, so it's about Tuesdays to Thursdays in six o'clock to eight o'clock. So we don't have a whole lot of time with the kids at that point. And then obviously um, in the, on the weekends we have about 10 o'clock to probably three o'clock with them. So it's not a whole lot of time with them at the shop itself. Um, so while we're there, we want to get stuff done. And so a lot of the work is done outside of the shopping and working and getting stuff fleshed. Wow. Your meeting times are almost exactly the same as ours. That's nuts. <laughs> but we need to make sure that, you know, if we're going to spend the time at the shop, we either need to be building something or trying to figure out ideas. We don't want to spend time on a computer because that's what you can do at home. That's what, that's what, that's how we view it at least. That's true. It's true. Um, one of the other things, so you mentioned that you do a lot of uh, outsourcing for water jetting and all of this for your outside machining. What are your in-house manufacturing capabilities? Like what do they look like? And do you manufacture those things, like what parts do you specifically want to manufacture in-house and what do you want your sponsors to manufacture out of house? So we have a two axis router, um, which will do a lot of our flat plating up to about a quarter inch. Um, and that is great for quick prototyping. And if we need to, you know, make a part really quick, we are able to obviously make those parts really quick. Um, the reason why we outsource is because if we give if we give our water jet company so a whole flat plate of two pieces of four by eight, they'll have that cut by probably Tuesday of the next week. That is not something that we would like to do as a team to be, you know, f fighting the router to be able to um, to produce those parts that quickly. Um, if we need to make something really quick, a whole new shooter, luckily we have all of the capabilities to to route that stuff. It's just not something that we like to do repeatedly um, but obviously our first round stuff we'd like to water jet um, as you guys are looking at right now our 2019 robot um, we can gladly say that we could make a whole brand new claw redesigned and powder coated in a day and that is that is <laughs> something really great to have as as resourced and we have um, some we have two lathes and an end mill that we have to machine parts, but some of the some of that just comes into the design. You know, if we can make a shaft that's just two two um, snap ring grooves or two eclip grooves, um, that's a very simple shaft to give to the to the kids, and they can make that. And we're going. We always go through trainings on um, on the summertime of getting them better at machining and what what it means to hold a tolerance. That's really interesting. No, that's we're just starting to get into a lot of that stuff uh, on our team because we haven't been able to do a whole lot of manufacturing in house at all. So we had to rely on a lot of uh, sponsors for helping us with that in the past. Um, so this is a question from Twitch chat. And um, how does 179 come up with their must do list for their robots? Not just this year in particular. Um, that was from Focus Baton uh, on Twitch chat. Obviously, everybody wants to do everything. You know, I, I think that's everybody's goal is being able to accomplish everything in every way, shape, or form. Um, we do take that route, obviously, with some of our crazier designs in the past of how do you fit everything in there that you want. And in our original designs, um, there was a sliding part on the bar to be able to translate on the bar like everybody else was thinking of at the beginning of the season um obviously stuff evolves um but we go into it not limiting ourselves um, we definitely want to be um able to do everything um but sometimes it just doesn't happen um that robot that you're seeing right now on screen 2018 um there wasn't a whole lot to do in that game. You know, you're picking up cubes and you're climbing. And um, one of the one of the um, crazier things is obviously being able to score forward and backwards on that robot. Sometimes we do things just for fun, um, just to give ourselves a design challenge. Um, this year is is no different in 2020. Could you make a short robot that could score very fast and very reliably? Of course you can. 
Um, but where's the fun in that? You know, if you can if you can test your limits and be able to teach these kids some off kilter design design processes, it's it's a lot of great um, experiences for those kids to have. You know, different thinking and thinking outside the box is what we kind of strive for. Wow, that's didn't know that. That's definitely insightful. We got another one from Twitch chat from uh, Gray Phantom Delta fifty eight thirteen. What does one seventy nine use for their CAD version control, if anything? If you're referring to the software that we use, um, we use both SolidWorks and Inventor. I personally use Inventor, um, but a lot of our students and a lot of our mentors are are um, versed in SolidWorks and. Uh, it's a good trade-off. You know, if you are using SolidWorks and somebody else is using Inventor, then you can give each other step files and obviously nobody can touch each other. Um, step files are just really dumb models that you can give to each other. And obviously that's an advantage. Um, but uh, it really doesn't matter what you use. You know, as long as you can get your designs on paper as quickly as possible, you know, if you're if you're fast at, at designing that way, go for it. Um, previous to before 2014, our one of our great mentors um, only designed in AutoCAD. Everything was done in 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 um, line drawings and in dumb solids in his models. And it is incredible what he was able to do. He could trash an entire robot the night before and come up with something something new and it's it's you know obviously that's something great to, to to have but not everybody has that specialty in that cad software so yeah no i it's definitely a it's a you have many choices to make out in there in the world of cad so next we're going to start that giveaway uh for that wonderful t-shirt uh and i believe the keyword is going to be garbage if I'm not mistaken, we, we're, the keyword is garbage. Uh, so if you want to win the 179 failed design shirt, type garbage right now in that Twitch chat. <laughs> let, them, let them know how much you want that shirt. <laughs> That's nuts. A lot of people want some garbage here tonight. <laughs> All right. So, but if you if you DM our Instagram page or our Twitter or our or our, um, our Facebook, um, send me the size and I will have one custom made for you. So, oh. oh, hey, if they win, if they win, only the winners. Hold on, real quick. Uh, if you do win, please reach out to first updates now first, and then we'll relay yes. that to one seventy nine. Yes. Yeah. All right. So to to switch gears just a little bit here, uh, I want to talk a little bit about like how does 179 approach their recruiting and outreach? Because you said that you're not a school team, and I find that super interesting because I didn't know that at all about your team. Uh, how does your team get its members and whatnot? It is very hard for us to get students. Our school that we are associated with helps us a lot with keeping our budget and keeping everything you know withheld. Um, but it is a very intense IBAP school. And obviously even the kids that we do get from them are very, very intense and they are loaded um, pretty hard. Um, so the first, their first initial, their, their idea of what the season looks like, you know, when they're working a lot from home and it's sometimes very deceiving. So we do lose a couple of kids that way. Um, knowing that we have reached out to other communities in our area and we haven't really, for FRC in our area, hasn't grown too, too much. Um, so we could still reach out to other schools in our area or like 4-H or other community-based um, subsidies that way. So that's how we get the majority of our students, but we still stay pretty small. Um, we always strive to go for the 50, 60 kid mark, but sometimes it's, it's just hard that way to get oh, that yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And I've got time for, I believe we've got time for one more question and I'm going to take another one from Twitch chat here. Jet K 2928. What does 179 do to train their drive team? Is there anything special that you guys do that you want to like highlight? That's something that we're kind of looking at coming into next year. Um, we are definitely going to be training a lot during the off season and training um, 
kids in the pipeline um, just in case if something does happen. Um, I was fortunate when I was a driver that nothing happened to me. And if something did happen to me, we were going to be in big trouble. Um, and that goes for all of our drivers um, in our history. And being able to hold multiple kids and getting getting them ready for their next seasons is something we're looking into. But um, we train with Taco Dial, which is, um, I'm sorry, um, our off-season robot is something we build every year that is something new, something brand new that we've never made before, something that we're trying to experiment with. Um, I'll give an example. This past year, we made a three-wheel swerve drive for an off-season robot. Um, crazy. Um, it was running on six <laughs> Neos powered. That's powered to the wheels, um, but that is um, something we were trying to to test to see if we were capable of doing so, and if a driver can even control something that was going. Uh, it was actually 22 feet per second and was really, really fast, um, but having that off-season robot and being able to test and tune for the off-season is kind of the way that we train. Um, the best way to learn if you're a driver is on that field. You could practice for hours in the shop, and it's just not even close to the same as being behind that wall, feeling that pressure, and feeling you know, that anxiety come at you, and being able to hold it all together just because there's a lot of people watching you. Uh, so yeah no it's it's insane 22 feet per second that's that's nearly ludicrous speed you could race a tesla down a drag strip with that <laughs> somebody somebody has a video somewhere on it at the end of one of our um off seasons they we took the claw off and we let the reins loose and we did laps around the uh the uh the middle of the field and it was ludicrously fast the battery fell out of the robot but that's besides the point uh, that's because it launched off the cable bump on last year's field so just an unscheduled disassembly nothing to be concerned about <laughs> all right it was and that's a lot of fun and being able to test your machining capabilities in off-season robots but so now we're gonna draw for that giveaway I, a bunch of people are looking for some garbage tonight so let's see tyler who who won all the right. garbage? well we'll let dylan model that real quick uh one more time as we go through uh just really dylan there was a question is this t-shirt available to be bought anywhere no um if that changes keep an eye out on our instagram there you go awesome if that changes let us know too we'll let the uh let our audience know as well of course. Uh, and then one last thing while we're drawing for that garbage was the keyword on there uh do we expect any other sort of robot reveal coming up or a cat released or anything like that <sighs> I'll do a reveal video. <laughs> <laughs> and premiere it on fun. It's sold. Thank you. We will, All right. premiere, it. We'll, we will premiere it here. There we um, go. But we will have to get something together, and we'll have to wait until we are allowed back. That's, yes. that's very fair. Uh, congratulations, uh, Ika Camille. Uh, for winning, I've never never seen that person before. So congratulations uh, for winning that. Actually, I have. I'm sorry, I do remember that from earlier uh, in the year. So congratulations and a subscriber. So lots of rigged emotes in chat. That name is just not one I've. I don't think I've read up before. So it might be a first time winner. Getting so, our subscribers. What is this? Yeah, lots of rigged rigged stuff going on here. So congratulations. Reach out to me uh, either in Twitch or Discord, and uh, we'll get the information over to Dylan so you can get your T-shirt. And thanks a lot, Dylan, for uh, getting away a garbage T-shirt. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you well everybody that's all the time we have for our show tonight and thanks to everybody for coming out and hanging out with us and don't forget the fun needs your help to stay loud live and independent please consider giving your support by joining fun nation with a subscription or bits here on twitch or by becoming a patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get information that your team needs don't forget to check us out on discord youtube Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, right here live on Twitch. If you're watching our show live, our next show is going to be Mouth of the South. On behalf of Brian, myself, Dylan, and of course, our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks to all of our moderators in the chat. See you next time, right here on the Sweet Tea Region Show. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now.
Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.